there everyone, it's Laurel Beard. First of all, I'm gonna apologize for my voice because I am battling a cold. I don't want it to come, but it seems to want to come anyway. Uh, I am here today with a video using some goodies from the latest stamp of approval collection called The Perfect Reason. It's chock full, I've got a stencil, which I'm super excited about. This is the first stencil in the collections. This is the Mod Square stencil. And she's also got some stamp sets and some dies. They're really, really fun. You're gonna see a little bit of what's in the collection today in the video. I'm going to start by making a few backgrounds using the stencil, just using the same stencil but creating backgrounds in a different way. The first is using some embossing paste here. There's many different brands on the market of embossing paste and I'm just applying that through a stencil with a palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, you can use a butter knife or the edge of a cardstock, whatever you want to do to spread this embossing paste through the stencil and then I'm going to set that aside to dry and then I'm going to move on with the next background. I'm using Aqua Teeny, Flirty Fuchsia, Tierra, and Orange Twist. And I'm just going to blend these inks through the uh, stencil the traditional way that you've seen many people do ink blending through the stencil. I've gone ahead and adhered my stencil on the back of the cardstock. I did it because I'm notorious for tearing my cardstock when I peel up the tape. But I also want to make sure that my cardstock stays in place. I find that when I get lazy and don't do this step, I shift my stencil out of place when I'm blending the inks and then it takes me more time uh, to line that stencil back up than it did to blend the whole background. <laughs> so I did not get uh, lazy this time. Now these inks blend beautifully. These are very, very, very juicy ink pads so you do not le need a lot of ink. I'm tapping my blending tool very lightly onto the pad. I'm starting off my paper and working on and uh, it's just beautiful. Beautiful the results that you get. Um, you can be more heavy-handed and even get brighter, vibrant colors. Wanted to show you the same colors on craft cardstock in case some of you are interested in how the inks would look on craft cardstock. So I'm using the same inks here and I'm trying to do the same pattern, apply them in the same places that I did on the white cardstock so you can see the difference here. Another thing is these inks also react with water. So if you wanted to, you could flip on some, or flip, flick on some water uh, with the paintbrush and you'll get those really cool water droplets that I'm known for doing. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> this is some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And then when I peel that back, just look how beautiful that is. So you can see the difference with the white and the craft. Now I was glancing over at my stencil and I saw that I had some ink still sitting on top of the stencil so I thought I would try to see if I can get an impression by taking some water and misting that stencil with all the ink all over it and then pressing some cardstock onto that stencil and try to get an image transfer and I did get a very nice light subtle uh, ink transfer by doing that. Then I thought, hey, let's see if we can watercolor through the stencil. So I took the same colors and smushed them down onto a craft sheet I'm working off of. You could also use an acrylic block or some packaging from your stamps, anything slippery if you don't have a craft sheet like I do, or you can laminate a piece of cardstock, whatever. And anyway, I, am, I have a water glass off to the side, by the way, <laughs> and I am just picking up the color. Now, the more water you use, the lighter the color will be. If you want a more intense color, then don't pick up so much water but you can watercolor with these as well. I just love this funky design stencil. I think it's so much fun. There's a lot you can do with the patterns here. And then I have this watercolored background here. It's very, very pretty. And you can see the difference between the two. And that was watercolored cardstock, by the way. All right, now I wanted to create kind of an ombre look. I wanted to see if I could create like an intense color and then move my way down the page but using the same color ink. So I'm using Aqua Teeny, which is uh, without doubt my favorite color. I love those aqua uh, color families so much. So I'm going in with a very heavy hand and applying the ink directly onto the stencil and then I'm just lightening my hand as I move my way down. You can see I'm not really picking up any more ink or anything. And look at that beautiful gradation of color that you get from the one ink color and using the stencil. I adore that background. Right at this point, the first panel that I did with the embossing paste is dry, so I'm just going to go on with a couple of the colors here, and I'm just going to apply the color directly over the embossing paste. And the embossing paste is going to allow that ink to stick. And I just think this really gives some fun, raised dimension here. So pretty. Flirty Fuchsia, Tierra, and the orange color is the colors that I used here. Orange Twist orange twist. <laughs> all right, so here's a look at all the backgrounds that we just created uh, in the video today. I'm going to pull a couple of cards together and then I'll show you at the end uh, still photos of all the cards that I made using these backgrounds here. This is the perfect vine die. This is in the new collection and I adore this die. I went ahead and ran it through my die cutting machine with some green cardstock. 
going to take that beautiful ombre panel that we created and I'm going to hack it down the middle. Ah, I know. I was a little nervous because what if it didn't line up or whatever. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to hack it down the middle to create the, the design for this next card here. I've got a white top folding card, uh, regular four, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to add a little grass skirt to the leaves here just a little bit to kind of draw in some more of that color. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and build up this card here. All right, so you can see I've hacked my card in half, but I'm ready to start putting it together. So I've got some double-sided foam tape here. This is that giant roll by Scotch. Uh, it's as big as my head. It lasts a really long time. And I'll just peel off that backing paper, and then I'm going to line that up with my card base on the bottom. Love that color, and I love that design of that stencil. I just adore this. Okay, this is funny. I did a lot of editing here because I'm going to tie, you see that bow I just like miraculously tied? I'm not kidding you, that took me five minutes. Five minutes to tie a little bow. I mean, what is wrong with me? So I edited that out, you're welcome. <laughs> so I tied the two vines together. I'm using some multi matte medium. Very heavy glue, but it also dries completely invisible. So when it oozes out the side, which it always does when I'm using it, uh, you won't be able to tell, and it's super strong. All right, I've gone ahead and pulled out another stamp set from the collection. It's called Everyday Mod, and I'm going to use that stamp set for my sentiment here. So I stamp the word blessing, then I stamp the word URA with some Versamark ink onto some black card stock and heat embossed it with white, and that's this card. Ah, the stencil compared with the vines. I, I just, I adore it. I adore it. All right, so here's the embossed panel, the embossing paste panel we did. I'm using those dies again, and I'm going to try to build up a little flower here. So I'm kind of cutting that top leaf off the die, and I stamped all of these flowers with uh, onto vellum using Versamark ink, sprinkled on some white embossing powder, and heat set that. And then I'm using that same multi -media, uh, matte medium glue, and I'm just slapping it on the back of that vellum completely. And as I'm working with this card, I am putting something heavy over the top of it, like an acrylic block here, to make sure that that adheres because that embossing paste does have some texture to it. This is the Perfect Reason stamp set, by the way, and I'm using the Party Dress ink right here for the sentiment. And that's also the same stamp set that I use for the florals as well. So I'm going to put something down, a little flower right down in the middle here. And I chose to use vellum because I really wanted the design of the stencil to shine through that those florals there. So vellum was the perfect choice. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to add a little bit of something, something down here by the sentiment. Worry less, giggle more. I mean, seriously, that should be everybody's motto. Should be mine. I worry all the time. I'm a very anxious person. And here's a look at that finished card here. The dimension from the embossing paste and the ink color from the, the stencil. It's just beautiful. Here's another card I pulled together where I did that basic ink blending uh, onto the stencil. And here's another look at the card with the same ink blending onto some craft card stock as well. And here's a look at all four cards that I made using some of the products from the collection. Now, I didn't even show you all of the products that are in this collection. It's kind of a secret. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. But um, there's a couple of other fantastic stamp sets and dies. Uh, so here's a look at all of the cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. The Stamp of Approval Perfect Reason Collection. You're going to want to take a look at it. It's just, it's happy. You know what I mean? It's just a happy collection. So here's a couple of other videos I thought you might be interested in. I don't know why. Watch them, don't watch them, whatever floats your boat. And thank you guys so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.